Here we are, back at it again, another episode of the Artistry of Podcast with your host, Bo Miles. Cue the music. All right, so uh, let's see. We were okay. This is the eleventh of uh, January. Now, I I will be looking for that um, for a second job. Right now, it's only because of uh, just my expenses. Right, we we just got to keep it going. We can't we can't stop. We have to maintain, but. But I do have a I do have a plan for freedom, right? I do have a plan for freedom, so that that part is is good. Um but the other stuff we, we you know, we just gotta juggle, right? Um I did do a video, um it's what is it? It was it was the avatar. So you guys remember I said, okay, look, I'm gonna I'm going to do um, like videos where you can actually see me and see a visual. And so I did that. I did my first uh, my first one, which it is going to come out um, tomorrow on YouTube. So I did like a, um, a this style video because uh, or this style of of a presentation. Right. Where it's me talking but the only difference is that I have a visual um, aid. I have visual aid because I don't want I don't want that stuff to be too far away from the podcast. So if you look at that and you're like, yo, I like it. You're right. Like, yo, what he's saying, um, man, the guy Bo Miles is saying some stuff. I like it. So let me check out the podcast. So so it's it's still in vain of the artistry of podcasts. So I definitely encourage you guys to check it out. And I was going to put it up because, um, I know most of you, or just when I think like, when I think about, um, myself, there are podcasts far as, um, like, um, fight the fighter and the kid, um, Theo Vaughn's Joe Rogan's right. Where, I just listen to it. Like, I I don't really watch a visual. I just listen. Um, There's even like the casual criminal. It was like the casual. I think it's like the casual criminist or something close to that. Um, I like that as well. But every now and then. Something will happen in the episode. I'm like, yo, man, I want to go in the and see like exactly, you know, what they're looking at. Right. So. So just with that in mind, I'm like. I might put that segment on here, right? Because I know that, look, I want you guys to get that information, right? So, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it in there and I'll do um, like whatever, whenever we stop the episode. So whenever this episode ends, technically, then I'm going to insert the um the footage right the the avatar it could because it's not really a spoiler review but it's just me talking about certain things that i thought about and just my reactions of the movie so i'm gonna put that at the end and so however long this goes then we're gonna tag on another i think that ran about 30 minutes so um so we'll we'll do it like that right so then that way um, you guys can listen because you might not check out this on YouTube, right? You might not check it out. And, um, it was still entertaining. Like, like I, I covered some questions, so it was still, it was still entertaining. So I'm gonna put that, I'm gonna definitely put that at the end 
of this, right? So, so we got that going. Um, the music, right? We, we, we got the music, like the, just the program with the music, how it's going. I have it. All right. Look, I need to create, um, another book and videos to, to, to sell it, right? Because when we think about, okay, how, how am I making money? Cause remember, we talked about this maybe a few, um, episodes ago. I'm not really sure if it was, the last two or three, but I, I'm sure it was within the last three episodes where we talked about, okay, this is how, uh, this is how one of my friends make money. This is how another friend makes money. This is how another friend makes money. Well, okay. How do I make money? Right. And I make money with, um, digital products. That's really the lane that I want to be in. Right. I want to, I want to make more money with, with my digital products. Now, I don't want to sell like I don't want to like I don't want your email address, especially if you if you didn't buy the product. Right. So like I don't want to capture your email address and just spam you with all of this info. Hey, you need to be practicing. You need to be doing this. You need to be doing that. No, I don't want to do that. But So. So what I'm what I feel, I feel like, all right, I need to. When you buy that's when I get your, um, I get your email address, right? I get your email address or let's say, cause I'm a revamp the bow nose music, uh, website. So if I revamp that, then, okay. If you want to get on here, um, if you want to, you know, kind of look at the video, all that stuff is going to be free as far as the video part. Right. But where I'll make the money will be on if, you know, if you want you have a decision. If you want to support me, you can buy the book, right? And the book will be $10 and you'll buy the book and the book will have a video series that goes along with it. That way it'll just teach you this way, you know, because you can read, you can read the book or whatever. But if you ever get into, if you come across any questions in the book or, or you just want to hear some of the examples played or however, you can then go to the website right and you can um look at all of that stuff for free so so that that's how we're um so like that's how i make that's how i make money now now i just need more products i need more books and uh as a vehicle right i use the youtube um platform to have and you can just watch the video and learn so the way I'm putting it, because I want to I want to speak to myself when I was 20. I want to speak to myself when I was 15. I didn't have money to to buy the material when I was when I was young like that. Right. I didn't have the money <clears throat> to do that, but I still wanted to learn. So those videos are going to speak to me at my younger in my younger age, in my younger time when I didn't have the money. But. The books on Amazon and just being able to buy the book, whether because I do believe in the physical book, I believe that you should buy a physical book and the digital, the physical book, because just humans, some of us and really all of us. I mean, we just when we can touch something, it just the learning and the transfer of knowledge is just faster and it's better. So I'm going to have the physical book. And I'm going to have the digital book, right? The digital book is more of a reference. I feel like once you get something and it's a part of you, because that's really where the big problem is, is, is making it a part of you. So if you get the physical and this is with anything, with any type of learning, if you can have some type of hands on physical touching and manipulation of something, then you're um, you're going to retain it. You're going to retain it a lot faster. Right. And then the digital part of something is is to maintain it. Right. As you observe and look, look something and look at it, and look back at it. Now you're maintaining what you've already established, what you've already um, built. So those two things will speak to me now as you know, look, I want to support people. I want to support. So, so the people who want to support me, I'm going to give them a way to support me and the people who can't, but they want to learn. I'm going to also give them, um, what, what they want and what they need and with the idea that, okay, hopefully, um, 
hopefully I can offer enough value that you feel like, yo, man, I really I really want to support this guy. And just with the teaching, like, yo, like I'm definitely excited about this about this next project because I feel like I feel like it's this is the way that it should be done. Right. So I'm, I'm in the zone creatively um, now. I just have to uh, get into a part where the market agrees with me. Right. So. So we got that going. Um, the music, I know that I need to run advertisement to the music that I have up right now. Right. So. So eventually I'm going to get to that. I'm not really I'm not too worried about it. I'm not too worried about it, but um, because the music is good. Um, the Marvelous Adventures of Robert James, like that's a really good uh, project. The Cyber Runner, another good project. Um, the Cora B album, that's a good project. So um, what is it? Shades of Lo-Fi, that's a good project. Right. So so the music is and, I, and it's timeless. It's not I feel like it's timeless. So once the money and everything is aligned right for me to to focus on it, I'll be able to do it. Right. And I do have a project where uh, like I'm getting ready for my next musical project. And it is a so it's a return to 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 that low fi feel. So um, I'm getting everything together, just the sounds, how the music's going to go. Just um, so I'm, I'm doing that in my head. Right. So all it man. All, so the stuff is good. Now I just need I need that second job to maintain everything financially, just to maintain and have a balance. Right. So. Um, so. So, you know, like that's what's going on right now. And like I said, like I just I feel good. Um, I, I mean, I definitely wish that that I had a break. Right. That I that I that I had a miracle. But I got a I got a be grateful for the miracles that that I do get right so these little ground hits that I am getting I have to um I have to be grateful for that and I and I got to keep looking forward and staying positive and motivated and and looking at that like all right yo we 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 getting ground hits right or we're uh we're not striking out right so we're not striking out where this is a slow game Right. So so that that's that's what's going on um, as of as of right now. And there's the strategy to grow the podcast. I feel like I feel like it's going to be good. You know, Um, uh, tomorrow I'll upload the avatar, all of the clips. So I've, you know, created the clips. Uh I have the shorts, so I have five shorts. I have maybe like five or six regular videos, so I have that going on. And uh, it's like, all right, you know, we're we're in a good space. Now we just got to put it out. Then I'm I'm going to speak on the Dana White issue, and um, and just other issues as they come up that I feel like even the uh, the Ohio murder. Um. But the four Moscow that because even I think the last episode I was thinking be, and, and that was a good point. Like it was just um, the wording, right? Law is is so contingent on the way that something is worded. So they worded what they had. In the break that they had was um, genealogy. It was like genealogy database. So then that caused people to speculate that they were actually talking about a genealogy database such as 23andMe and um, Ancestry.com, which we know that that uh, no police entity, no law enforcement entity, entity can use those platforms. They have to use another one. So, you know, just with the wording, we were led to believe that 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 was the case. Right. But we found out that um, that it wasn't that that there was no database 
they just use the word genealogy database to to cover up that they actually grabbed the father's DNA from the trash or however they got it because they were already on to uh, Brian Kohlberger already. They were they were on to him and were locking in on him maybe a week within a week after the murder. So the information that they're, that they were pushing to us, it was more of, look, we can't, we can't, we don't want him to feel like we're even on to him. Cause then he's going to take extra precaution. But I feel like he, just because he studied criminal, um, crimi, criminal, criminal, criminology, right? Criminology. So, because he studied criminology, he was getting his PhD, right? He was a PhD student at this point. He should have already assumed that that they would follow, especially just with the cameras. And I think I talked about this um, prior to, to the murder. It was about the camera. Okay, he we we showed they showed him on one camera. But then they would only thing they would do is check everyone's camera. And that's what they did. They checked everyone's camera because they knew what street he was going down. So once you get him down the street, you just keep going down that street and checking cameras until you don't see him no more. And then you see your possibilities. OK, did he go left? Did he go right? You check a little bit to the left, check a little bit to the right. Whatever one gets a hit. Boom. You just follow him down all the way until he gets home and that's pretty much what they did they know that he turned on his cell phone so they was looking at cell phone data they knew that he turned his cell phone off uh prior to the murder and then he turned it back on right after the murder right so he turned it off i think on his drive there so he he while he was home he turned it off in what whatever neighboring state he turned it off and then right after the murder, then he turned it on, right? Now, like I said, all right, you're a PhD, which, which, you know, we, criminology, who knows what was the, the, um, the specific area that he was trying to become an expert in. But all in all, like you just, you, you can't underestimate your opponent. No matter what you do, you have to assume that, okay, they're going to check my cell phone records. They're going to see that I've, I've been hanging around this area, um, for a while casing it. They're going to like, they're going to be able to see that they're going to check my location, right? Which I, I've made a whole bunch of adjustments on 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 his behavior on his action right but i'm not going to speak on it because not that i think that any of you guys are going to go out and and uh try to try to do a better um a better murder <laughs> but look look we gotta we gotta breathe uh as much positivity into the world as we can right um, people who, who are going to commit these type of crimes, they're going to do it regardless if I say what he should have done or if someone else says what he should have done. But I'm sure other people will speak on it. So I really don't need to speak on it just because we already know that other people are, are going to speak on it. So, you know, you don't need me um, beating a dead horse. But but what I will say is. Is that he should have he should have already assumed um, a lot of, a lot of stuff already. Right. So, so we'll just, we'll leave that there. But, but then you have the, the roommate, right? One of the roommates. And this is, look, this is hard. I'm sorry. And, uh, I, I think I will do a video. I think I will do like, um, a separate, you know, visual aid type of video. I will do one on that, but, but I'm sorry just for the roommate. And I get, you know, there. look, I agree that there's only one monster that we know of right now. And that 
is uh, the alleged Brian Kohlberger, right? We still we still have to say that look, he is innocent until proven guilty. Even though you have all of this information and they're painting pictures this certain type of way, um, really until he confesses or enough evidence is is substantial to where it's like yo he did it right so really until then but so with that said the roommate who survived who actually witnessed her you know witnessed one of the girls kind of sobbing crying a little bit hearing the dog bark because i mean you just gotta believe that all right one of them said that they slept through it but we just gotta be you just gotta be real they didn't sleep through it okay that's just what they're saying so that they don't get brought into it. And it's perfectly fine because the one who allegedly slept through it, I was checking out this thing on, uh, it was Haiti and, and the guy is, um, you know, there's this violent type of war going on right now or, um, uh, what is it? Civil revolution or however you want to call it right civil war they got violence and mayhem going on one of the guys this gang comes in they come in they ready to you know pillage the neighborhood or whatever he hides under the bed he he says his wife hit him under the bed right and look guys i'm just a skeptical so we have to take that into to consideration. All right. So like I said, like I'm, I'm just a skeptical. So I don't believe that it was her idea, right? It was, it was, it was her idea to hide me under the bed, but he, he, you know, he, he hides under the bed. Um, and he hears, he hears his wife being raped by these um, guys, right? And, uh, you know, it's, it's just, it's unfortunate. I mean, it really is. Um, and after it's over, then, you know, they leave, I guess, after all the guys get their turn or whatever. I think they kill his uh, nephew, right? And before we even get into... Is that story real? Before we even get into that, we just let's let's first address that he hid under the bed and pretended that he wasn't there while while an assault is taking place. And we I bring up that story because the girl, the roommate, both of them remember both of them said that they were asleep. Both of them said that they were asleep. But I don't believe that. I don't believe that neither one of them were asleep, that both of them were up and they were afraid. And it's and that's fine. Like, that's fine. It's fine to be afraid and just, you know, look, I'm just not going to make a sound, not going to make. Um, I'm just, you know, and hopefully they, they won't think that no one's here and then they'll move on. Right. So so that as an option, there's nothing wrong with that. And so one of them said, hey, I just slept through the whole thing. The other one said that. But then they gave a statement to police and police eventually released it that no, she was not asleep, that she um, heard this interaction. She heard this stuff. She heard one of the girls say someone's in the house um, sobbing. Right. So. Just really, I mean, you, you got to know that they that there was some type of screaming. Now we know that. Um, look, if you're asleep and you just get stabbed in your neck, like it's it's just going to be horrible, right? So, um, just the different sounds, and you just you just never know what what they um what the roommates heard. But it's okay in that situation to be afraid and to just to just hide look i just have to shrink and hopefully hopefully they don't see me it's fine and, and i believe that that's what happened but on the other hand um could it could it have been something else and that's why i say um for him right now we're only looking at him like we're so we're only looking at him until 
until further notice. But but if something should come up, some type of information should come up to to the link, actually, because that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to figure out, OK, what's the link to these um, four individuals right now? If something comes up to where the link is one of those roommates, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that that's what it is. I'm not trying to, to blame anyone, but I'm saying that if something like that were, were to come up, I wouldn't be surprised. Like it wouldn't be, um, it wouldn't be a bombshell to me at all. Right. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a bombshell. It would be like, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, of course. Right. Like, yeah, I mean, this is how this type of stuff um, goes, but it's not, hey, this is the only way that it went. Right. So so I'm not I'm, I'm definitely not saying that. So, um, you know, we're, we're getting more information. But how they word things, right, how they word things, we're going to take that into consideration on the next on the next case, the next time something comes out and some information get revealed and they start throwing out certain terms. Well, all right, well, we got to question even what you're saying. And we have to say, okay, what if, and, and I, I, I didn't think of this, but what if they actually do have a suspect, even though they tell you that they don't have a suspect, and we know we actually know from um, people that were close to the case, whether it's uh, girlfriends of cops or girlfriends of investigators or family members of investigators. Right. We actually heard that they were a lot closer than what they were leading the public to believe right now. This wasn't mass knowledge, but. You know, just when when you're close in the fight in circle, you you get to hear a lot of inside information. There's a lot of insider trading going on when you are in the fighting arena. If you're if you're close to fighters, you're close to any type of combat sports. You actually get to hear a lot more details than would uh what like a reporter is reporting with the public here. So, so I actually heard that they were close to finding that they were a lot closer than, uh, to finding a suspect and that this case would, um, it is not gonna, it's not gonna, it's not gonna go unsolved. Right. So that, that was what I was hearing, but, you know, like I said, you, you, you kind of hear this type of stuff, right? And you, and you don't really pay it any mind. But but now as I'm hearing it, the net, like I said, on the next case, because remember, we talked about this with these planes, each crash there, there's an adjustment. With each case, there is an adjustment. So we're learning, right? Boom. What if they have more information? Right. So. So only thing we had to do was say, follow the cameras, right? Which I already was thinking about. I'm already on top of that. So of course they were already on top. So then that would have took us to where they wanted to go. Right. And then we would have thought, okay, we don't want our suspect to, to, you know, become aware that, that we're on to him and then change something up and do something, maybe try to get rid of something. We don't want them doing that. Right. So the whole time, you know, that they were backtracking and looking and I'm sure that they currently are still looking for the murder weapon. Right. Will they find it? Who knows? Nine times out of ten. Um, just with enough pressure on him, you put enough pressure on him and give him. Look, give him an out. So if you put the death penalty on him and then. And then take it away by saying, well, look, you give us the murder weapon and all of, you know, just the whole details. You crack this thing open for us and we'll and we'll uh, we'll take the death penalty off. Then they're going to uh, they're going to get it right. They're going to get it. Um, but, hey, some people 
some people look they they welcome the death penalty they welcome death so every person in that regard is different some people want to live and some people don't so um you know as more and more of the information come out we'll know but but will they ever find the murder weapon yes there there are ways to get that type of information out of him but they were looking that's what they were looking for and i think that was the whole idea you know because they was already on them they was already telling them they're putting out information um they're doing that right to kind of lead them astray and make them believe that hey we don't have no ideas right so they're doing that to get them comfortable but the whole time you know that that they were looking for uh, looking for that murder weapon just trying to backtrack and you know retrace his whole steps and see if they can um, get the murder weapon themselves right but just following that basic lead that I was already aware of was with the cameras. Then I should have assumed that they already knew who, who he was already had an idea. Right. And just with the, when they said that the, the roommate slept through it, I, I already felt like, nah, they didn't sleep through it. Right. It was just a fear thing. It, and, and look, everyone, I, I would assume that everyone would be in that situation, especially if you don't have no way to protect yourself. Right. You just uh, lock your door and just hope and pray that uh, that no one comes in, that he doesn't come into your room. Right. So it's, it's nothing wrong with that like that. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. I, I can't I can't act like or pretend that uh, that they should. have. You know, no, they did everything right um, as far as as far as in, in an innocent look is as fine, you know. And the one that doesn't want to get involved, look, I was asleep. I don't know. Because we see that all the time, just in in poor neighborhoods, right? People don't, it's, you just don't want to get involved. You you don't know what's going on. You know, look, I mean, then they, gonna, they can get me, right? So you, you see that a lot just in, um, in poor neighborhoods and where people just don't want to get involved. They... Because it's like, look, I mean, if y'all don't get this person and I'm a threat, then they're just going to take out me. Right. And if I say something in the moment, then they're just going to come and attack me. What can I do? Right. So. So I get that. And and like I said, I'm not going to um, I'm not going after um, any of the roommates. And, and it was still brave of the one roommate to to speak up. Right. To speak up and say, hey, this is what I saw. And I saw him. Right. I saw I saw him. It was brave of um, I think it's DM or C. I mean, because they actually I I did hear the name. Right. But right now they're just releasing uh, the initials. But I actually heard the name. So I know the name. But I I didn't want to go and look and right really even process it to where I can say it right now. Like, I don't even know the initials. Um, just because like, I, I, you know, I don't want to put them through that because people are attacking them. They, oh, why you didn't call the police? Right. Why didn't you, why did it take seven hours later? And right. That's how people are. Even just with the Brittany Griner thing. Is it Garner? I think it's Garner. It might be Griner or Garner, but how people are attacking, attacking her for um for getting out and being traded for that uh for that arms dealer that russian arms dealer and look she wanted to be free <laughs> i mean you you can't you can't uh chastise and and just attack her for wanting to be free for wanting to get out right and then the united states makes a deal i mean look she wanted she wanted to be free so you know, we can't attack her. Look, they should have. I mean, it's really not her decision. That's not her fault. But but that's how the media is. And especially when we've been compromised by um, by the Russian propaganda. Right. We're already in America. We're already compromised by that. And we're compromised by, I'm sure, so many other different factions. We're already compromised so a lot of this backlash and this ne- negativity towards her, I'm sure, 
is in response and could be egged on by, you know, by that government. <clears throat> not even not even our own house, you know, is the reason why this type of stuff is uh is coming to light like this, right? So you just never know. Um but we we definitely like to go after people. So once you get the mark of the beast on you, then it's like boom, they just come after you. And that's what's happening and you know, I really uh, I don't want that to 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 be on that roommate on either one. So she was brave for even just giving what information she gave and, and just saying like, yo, I wasn't asleep that I did hear and that I did see something. I mean, that takes uh, takes a lot of bravery, right, to um, to do that. So so definitely hats off, definitely hats off for that. You know, we, we can uh, we can't disrespect her for that. And uh, we'll, we'll call it we'll call it quizzes on this um, on this section. So now I'm going to insert the um, I'm going to insert the the avatar two part. Right. My thoughts and stuff, the questions and different topics that I thought about as uh, as I watched or as I reflected on avatar two. So so we're going to go ahead and get that in um, now. Friends, all right, here we are back at it again, my friends. It is I, Bo Mouse, and what we're going to be doing is um, just kind of just pumping out content for this artistry of podcast channel. That way, just kind of um, so let's just try to grow it, right? Right now, as of today, right now, we have five subscribers. So, uh, Rico, you know what to do. <laughs> uh, you know, if you like it, if you like it. All right. So we saw Avatar 2 and I liked it, you know. So this isn't, I'm not going to be dropping spoilers in this quick review. This isn't um, going like super in depth, but just my overall idea and impression of the movie is as i liked it i liked it a lot i mean for me it was it was like it was like popcorn it, it, or or uh, candy right because popcorn i think is kind of good for you which i think this movie um it was tackling some tough issues right it tackled some tough issues um had had a lot to do with family it um and the Scullies, I think that's their name, right? Jake Scully, and I guess the whole clan, right? His, he has a family in this, him and the and this girl. So they got they got his alien love. They got a family, and the humans come back, right? So, um, they they got to move on, and that leads them to a new colony. And they there so now we just have to learn some new lessons as joining a new colony and and being an outsider, right? So being new again. And and it was good. Like, all right, it was three hours. Um my man Brendan Sharp, Shizab, he was like, yo, he was out after an hour. He had to check out, right? But that's only because he had little man with him. But all in all, like I feel like um I feel like the three hour time, it was good. It was it was solid. It was three three hours and maybe twelve three hours and twenty minutes. The it was some moments in there where the skin on the um, I don't even know if they even have a name for the race. You know, for like who they are um, as a species. I don't know the name, but but there was moments in there where the skin just looked it looked good like. It didn't look like CGI, right? The the movie, unless like when the humans were in there, that's what made it kind of feel like okay, this isn't a CG movie. Where I feel like the first one, it just had a, enough of a blend between human and um, natives, right? Because we're on their land, we're the aliens in this movie, so. So it had just the right amount to where it worked as far as feeling like you was in this world, right? This one, because it's more focused on the world and really not that many humans in it, 
it to me it just felt like a CG um, like a CGI movie, which is not bad. Like it was still good, but like I said, it just it didn't feel real to me. It didn't. But there were moments when they uh, when they were like up on the skin, a certain lighting on the indigenous people, right? And it was like, yo, like it looked, it looked good. It just, it looked really good. It, it didn't look like CGI. And that just made me think like, yo, it's so much more that can be done and that will be done. Right. Um, who knows how long it took for this thing to render down the pipeline, which I know back in what, 2000, whenever the first one came out that it, I'm sure it took a long time to render, right. To get through the pipeline. So, um, all in all, like I, I recommend the movie. I'm I'm gonna buy it when it uh when it comes on to home theater. I'm definitely gonna uh, buy it, and then I'm gonna watch the first one and then watch the second one. So because I really I couldn't tell any like difference far as far as oh this is drastically better. Um, but the war like the water all of it, man. The the movie was good. It was just a good movie. Yeah, people, they're going to have their gripes um, far as like story development. I'm not going to, you know, I, I like the story. I just I just liked it. I just enjoyed the whole experience. So um, definitely I recommend it. So if you guys haven't seen it, I definitely I highly recommend that you guys check out Avatar 2. We got some uh, stuff, some some questions or like just some ideas that came about from watching this movie that really stuck out to me. And the first one is, do we need a heaven or an afterlife? And this isn't a spoiler because even in the first one, right? So we can just really just kind of speak on the first one, but it still relates to, to um, part two as well. But there's moments where I think the girl, um, the main avatar, uh, the female, right? She, maybe her dad dies or um i know sigourney weaver character in the first one she uh she she takes some critical hits right but but there are moments where <clears throat> they return the life back to um to the spirit and they're they're really in touch with the spirit entity and they they gave it a name and and it goes back, right? So, you know, when you die in this world, if you're, I guess, if you're of the world, even when uh, when humans die, they, they can give them and present them um, to this overall spirit, right? And it just it just brings up the question because there is a, a sense, there is a sense of, of calmness. There is a sense of of it's gonna be okay right and at, for humans like d do we need that like do we really do we need um a heaven or an afterlife i felt it i i found it very comforting i felt it very comforting to know that that uh you will be with your loved ones um after after this stage of the game Right. So so for me personally, I find it very comforting to know that. Right. And we can see it in, in other like just mythology and just throughout human history. Um, this sense where where we want we want it to be more. Right. We want we don't want the game to end. We want we want to keep it. Just keep going. Right. Life wants more life. Life wants to live. Life wants to explore. Um, that's just my, my human interpretation of it, but, but just seeing it in this movie and how, how they're dealing with it, it just, it just kind of brought it into the forefront of my mind. Like, yo, is it important because more and more people are moving away from religion and faith based thinking and concepts? Uh, you get more and more people moving away. So I just wonder, OK, how does that how does that inflect or I can't say in, but impact? How does that impact culture, large scale culture? If if a whole government and a whole 
group of people believe that all right once it's over it's over um does that does it have a negative effect right because you can think of uh of an atheist whoever whoever um whoever atheists are out there and they're not it's not like they're just bad people all oh, because because I don't believe in in an afterlife which I don't know like I don't know if they don't believe in an afterlife I I I would just assume right so because because I don't believe in an afterlife then I'm just going to be bad right and that's not the case that's not the case so I wonder what type of large scale effects would that have because when I just look at at a kid very little if no adult has told them about God and told them about higher powers would they even think about it would they think oh there's a God right so at some point God is introduced and then it's uh, disseminated amongst the people. Now, um, everyone is believing, right? Of course, yes, I do believe that that is a, a form of control. But but I, I think of it as not created to be a form of control. I, I think that I would like to believe that somewhere in us, just when we look at these movies, somewhere in us, that longing for a God is in us, is inside of us, right? But I don't know if a child, um, I don't know if they would think of that. I don't know that a child would eventually say there is a God, but maybe because people are curious, right? So eventually when the, the child becomes an adolescent, and they become adults and they start to just question, where do I come from, right? So, I mean, just following that track, maybe, maybe that that's it, all right? I don't know if that's it, but <clears throat> but maybe, right? Maybe that's it. Um, what are you? What are your thoughts on it? You know, how do you guys feel about? Do we need it? Um, is it? Is it a part of all of us? Because some people believe and some people don't. So, so just not attacking each other. You know, just what? What do you think about it? Right. Um, so go ahead and drop drop a comment on that. You know, if you like. Another thing that. Uh, that came up in in the Avatar uh, two, the way of the water, was for me the family, right? And and it was very just their family unit. It was it was very uh, inspiring. It was something to long for, right? Like who wouldn't who wouldn't want to have um, a family like like the Scullies <laughs> over on uh, Pandora, right? Who wouldn't want to have uh, a family like that? Um, but we know just in reality, right? So for the story to, to push the story along, it has to be this certain way. And then the age and just the youth and all of that stuff it has to be, um, a certain age bracket and, you know, they're just writing this stuff. So it, it, everything falls into place and stays synced, right? For the, for the window that, that we're exploring in this but in today's time it seems like and this is just i don't know how to tapped in i am but from my perspective it just seems like friends are are more valued than family right and this is this is just cultural thing as far as just in in um i would say I don't know if it's black American family or black American culture or if it's just popular culture. I'm not really sure, but but just from my perspective, it seems like like as as uh, people get older, as children get older and they start to uh, step out on their own and they start to examine and say, OK, this is how I'm going to do it. This is how I do it. This is how I see it. I feel like just a um like a general pull is away from the family and it's and i get it you, well you have to fly you have to stand on your own two feet and and become an adult and become a man or a woman or you know you you have to do that so so i get that but but in this movie like who wouldn't long for a, a family for a close family right where everyone is close and everyone is in harmony 
and the environment is also pushing, hey, we need to be a family because in Pandora, you need like you needed your clan. You needed to be a part of a clan. You couldn't just be by yourself. So you needed to be a part of a clan. You needed to be a part of a tribe. Everyone needed to be. It wasn't just, OK, um, you know, Gary's a part of the tribe and, you know, Derek over there. Who knows what tribe he's a part of? It's like 90 tribes, 50, 11 tribes. Nah, it wasn't like that. It was it was one tribe. OK, we are the forest people. Then you got another tribe. We're the forest people. Right. So it seems like as humans, as we get into these larger cities, then the the emphasis on family is not as strong from the community. Whereas, you know, if you're in a smaller community, then the emphasis on the whole community as as a whole to thrive, I think, is stronger. Right. So so Avatar 2 definitely, you know, brought up that. And, and it was like, yo, like, like, yeah, I want that. Right. So it was so many things that they put in this movie that that I feel like that's why people want to go. That's why people want to live in a world like that, because because it was like, yo, it was it was real focused and uh, on family. Right. Um, what else we got? We have the alien love right now. Uh, those um, that species uh, like, yo, they and of course, you know, they were created by, you know, man, <laughs> as far as the way they look. Right. So so they were created to be appealing to humans. Right. So when you watch this, just like um, cartoons, when you see um any female character, right? <clears throat> Minnie Mouse or um, I'm trying to think of the skunk, like the, the female skunk. Like, so you got Pepe Le Pew and then his girlfriend, right? Or his love interest. Um, so anytime they put females in type of movies and shows and things of that nature, you get because humans are drawing, they're going to draw with a with an attractive um like a universal attractive feature to them, right? So now you have this with the aliens. So because, you know, because humans drew and created these aliens or, you know, the indigenous, and it's crazy only because um, cause we're so used to saying what is alien, right? But but we are the aliens, right? We're not from Pandora and we're invading, which uh, which is good. Like, that was just a good concept, right? But... Because they are um, attractive, because they were created, you know, to be attractive to humans. Now, in a in a real sense of that, you know, you got Jake as a human, and and he is, you know, he's has has an attraction to this um, species, this different species, and it just makes you think, like, like what is that? You know, like, what is, what is that? <laughs> you know, like, yo, I mean, it's, it's, it's really weird because in real life, I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't know because I don't see other species as being attractive, right? I don't see dogs and skunks and other female creatures, um, chimps, <laughs> gorillas, like, yo, like, I don't, like, I don't see any of them being, um, sexually attractive right but we know that some humans do but then but that's the question do they truly see them as being sexually attractive or is it something else right and because because i don't you know i don't know i don't look at, a, at another species and, and see um sexual attractiveness I can't really answer. I can't say that I can't say that they do. I can't say that they don't like that's that's one of the things that I'm learning just as our culture is shifting to looking at things more of a spectrum. Right. So you have the polar opposites of a of a spectrum. You know, this is this. This is that. And then on the other end, you have the reverse. Right. No, this is this and this is that. And things all come together together. And move ac across the spectrum. So you can have different things all over. So just because I don't see other um, species in like reality. And, you know, in reality, I don't see other species 
um, sexually attractive, that doesn't mean that every human doesn't see it. Right. So so that's something that, you know, I, I just can't assume. Right. And and it's just. Uh, it, it's very interesting because. We know that there were other. There were other species of humans like real, you know, not just race, but other humanoid species like we know that we know that there was that there was others right like we know that but yet but yet we're they're gone they're gone we're here and when you look at some people and this is something that that um that I noticed like just when you look at some people they they kind of look like the recreations of some of those species right some of those other humanoid species when you look at people so you can kind of see that like yo there was some mixing there whether it was force um or it was uh, mutual right that I, I don't know but um just uh we know that humans are like yo man, we some wild boys <laughs> like yo Yo, man, we some wild boys, okay? Like, nothing's safe around around humans, okay? Nothing's safe. And is that, is that to, to, is that something within to, to get us to the, the evolution, right? I mean, it, it has to be because it's something that, it's these urges, right, that drive evolution. So just from a technological standpoint, we have wants. OK, we want this. But on the but another thing that's that's really um, pushing. A lack a la technological advance is money. Right. If, if there was no money in any of this stuff, uh, anything that's, um, you know, tech related. And, and circuit board related, if it was no money in it, then then it, it would not evolve at all. Like we have this idea, oh, AI this and AI that and all of this stuff. And But the backbone of all of that is money. And once you take away the money from that, if that stuff is no longer making money, then it will cease to exist. The only reason why it, it, it exists is because of money. Right? The only reason why uh, this stuff exists is because of money. Because without money, then it's, the focus is somewhere else, right? So it, it has it has um, the the uh, the advantage of being backed by money. But human creation and procreation, we talk about procreation. That that's that's some that's not being backed by money. That's being backed by us. you know something that we we're just, it's too far back in the code. We don't even know what it is. Right. But we can only assume that, OK, hey, it's um, it's whatever. Right. So that was that that was very interesting just to see, because here you have a human guy. Right. And and, you know, you got this beautiful creature. And there, you know, he's trying to infiltrate and we're just talking about the first one he's trying to infiltrate. He's trying to learn the ways of uh, the, I think they're called Nav Navi, right? He's trying to learn the ways of the Navi species, or that might be their tribe, right? The Navi tribe. He's trying to learn their ways, right? So, so you you have these type of things that's going on, and it's like, it's like, okay, all right, all right, that's cool, right? And like I said, she's already um, attractive. He's in the body of this, you know, blue creature thing, right? He's in there. And um, one thing lead to another. And man, there's a song about the birds and the bees or, you know, I can't even think of it. It's a nice jazz song. I had to get back on my jazz. OK, you did. But uh, boom. Right. You had this connection. And then it goes outside of that connection. Right. When she actually goes to see him in the final act of we're talking about just part one goes to see him in the final act to save him his human form and she gets to see his human form and it's like yeah you know um like yo I, I love you as for you for who you are right so those um 
those those are, are definitely you know just those are some good topics just some good things to to really focus on just as as it pertains to human and like yo what is love like like what are we really looking for and searching for because a lot of times it, it just gets drowned out by the noise right so you know i mean like what do you guys think what, what are some of the thoughts that you have on um on you know not just would you date an alien if you could if you could go to pandora um would you date an alien like nine times out of ten you would right but that's only because and like look they're they're they look just like that is nothing's different um right so a lot of times you would but then that's like yo but really what's going on you know what's going on and with uh just ending on that right i would at some point while I'm watching this, like I said, the skin and that, all the texture and everything was all good. It, it just looked really good. It looked really good. It looked, it looked real, right? And it made me think like, yo, man, they could do some good horror movies with this level of CG, right? Because right now with with um, with CG and movies, it just it, there's a disconnect. It just looked kind of cheesy. It's like, eh, right? Everything was it was all scary, like the 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 normal jump scares. Okay. Um, Look, we, we have a perception. Let's pull up, pull a camera tight on your subject so where you can't see um, the whole surrounding, even though if it was in reality, the the subject could see all of this stuff. The subject would be able to see um, through their peripheral to the left or to the right. Right. Like there wouldn't be no jump scare. But, you know, the way they do it for us and they just kind of make things real tight and, you know, we can't see. Right. So. Just uh, playing with the unknown, right? And then, so you, you have all of that. All of that stuff is going well. And then you have the the monster or whatever you want to call it, the villain, um, the antagonist. And just depending on the CGI, it can pull you straight out of that, right? So then it's like, man, um, just regular uh, effects, should be better right but i think what we saw in, in avatar too far as that skin man like like i said there's only certain moments with the lighting and everything but it just looked real like it man it looked good like it looked good so that was more of like a um i feel like i feel like that is to come far as you know as it gets better i think movies are going to start to blend cg and real effects and it's going to get to a point to where you don't know what is real and and what is cg right so we're definitely on, on the right path of that um but because of that right because of that the skin looks so real it, in that world right some certain parts of it it just made you think like yo what do they smell like <laughs> okay like yo what do these indigenous species pandora like like how does Pandora smell? All right, and the texture of the skin. I don't know. Um, with the water tribe, I don't know if they were more like fish-like. So would it? Would they smell like dolphins? Would would the 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 giant our standard av avatars, which they they're not avatars, um, but you know, what 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 do they smell like? Right. Here, let's check um, this temperature. All right, temperature rise. I guess that's just over the um, temps to rise tomorrow. All right. Um, so it, it might, I don't know if it's going to get good or bad, but it had like a, um, like an exclamation mark. So I don't know if it's going to be uh, just too hot or what. Who knows, right? But, <clears throat> but that that that's something that i thought about because the skin looked that good the skin looked that good to where i thought you know what do they smell like all right now what do you guys think do you think it's more like uh like no it's two t two types we got the water type and then we have the regular there in the forest you know so look it goes down in the dm all right so look look i'm uh i'm 
this we're going to be pumping out more content like this where on this channel and we're going to have our weekly uh up uploads plus uh you can get this wherever you listen to your um podcast uh not this episode but you know the uh, artistry of episodes podcast episodes so definitely if you haven't um, you know, check it, check it, check out the, the podcast. We've been running a podcast for, um, for some years now. I don't know if it's like five years or, you know, six or seven years, but I do know that, um, that I took, I took like a year or two. I took, I mean, I may, I might've took like two years off and just didn't upload any episodes from going from, you know, once a week. So, uh, so, you know, I definitely, if you, if you like this type of content and you like what I'm saying, you like any of this stuff, definitely, uh, check out the links. I'll have the podcast links. <laughs> I have the podcast links down there, um, for, for, uh, Stitcher and Apple. Now I, I wasn't able to find it on Spotify, so I'm gonna have to check with my distributor and see like, yo, What's up with uh with Spotify, right? So so that way um some of you guys might you know you might want to listen to your um podcast on Spotify. So with that being said, uh bring it in. <laughs> there we have it. All right, so that's another another episode. And um look, look, we're getting it in, right? We getting it in. We're we're grinding one 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 day at a time, one week at a time, and just and just keep keep it going, right? So I definitely want to thank you guys. Um, I, I think we're up to like around thirty. No, I, no, we still might be hanging around twenty, but but I believe that we're going to get some growth. I believe that uh, that this year we're going to see um, we're going to see a growth. Whether it might be forty, we we might be up to forty listeners. Um, but, but, but the 17 to 20, I would, I would say probably, let's just say, you know, 17, but the 17, um, listeners that we've had just since whenever you guys jumped on and was like, yo, man, I really, you know, I like this guy. This guy has some good ideas. This guy's, you know, speaking the truth to the young black youth, right? You need, uh, I definitely just appreciate you guys and I thank you guys. Um, you know, I'm definitely aware of you just never know what tomorrow will bring. A better you, a better me, and we'll show this world we got more that we could be, right? So you just never know what tomorrow's going to bring. So just be grateful for now, right? Always be grateful for now and find find the beauty and find what is good now and 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 if you can't find it in your life look down look 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 down on someone else that's uh that's that's not doing as well as you are and hopefully you can um you can find some good there right but i i definitely want i want us to feel like yo we we getting it in okay we getting it in look look we we base hits we just getting a little base hits and uh, just slow inches, right? This is a game of inches. So look, let me just try try to get an inch. Keep pushing. And eventually, I'll get an inch. So definitely, thank you guys. Um, like I said, I definitely appreciate you. I appreciate whoever is listening. And Reese's Everyday life, friends and family.